Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. Today is the 14th of August. It is 9.02. Many of you would have grown accustomed to seeing me live at nights like this. I have, I have been taking some time. We don't do it every night like we used to. We did a video last night. So many may not have been expecting to see a video tonight, but things are, things are overtaking us and we need to address matters in the public space. So let us um, invite others to join us. This is an That should tell people the, the writing is on the wall for this madass government. I want to remind you that it was I who told the nation that Keith Rowley is a jackass. I told the nation Keith Rowley is an absolute jackass. When Fazir Mohammed brought me on his TV6 show to ask me how could I call Keith Rowley a jackass, I said to him, there are very few people in this country today that doesn't think Keith Rowley is a jackass. And he said, but plenty of people vote for him. I said, plenty of people regret that vote today. Today, Pomsiteras went with his pompous ass into Bitam. Love until East, love until West. Give them the interchangeable, regardless of what they want. <laughs> they, they, but listen, uh, they run the man. No matter what he do again in his life, no matter what he try to say, no matter who he attack, no matter how he tried to twist it, no matter how he tried to turn it, he went and beat him and they threw toilet water on him and they run his ass. He had to run out of beat him. 
And I want to tell Trinidad and Tobago something. And you see the rest of all you who sit down in Rapai Village and Chaguanas and Karani and Goodwood Park and West Morins and Palmis and San Fernando and Toko and Tobago East and West. You see the rest of all you who sit down. But be damn sure that today they have no party for party. <laughs> Let me stick up in. Today I have to share my very good friend Paul Daniel Nahus. Paul Nahus is one of three people I consider sons, besides my actual son. And Paul Daniel Nahus made me proud today when he when he wrote, I completely condemn the skit at the PNM family day. Paul PNM. He's a PNM supporter. He's a PNM supporter. Faris is his uncle. And this is what Paul wrote. I completely condemn the skit at the PNM family day where the red gorillas rip the yellow sari off of a woman. Now the reason I'm sharing Paul Daniel Nahus's post is because a lot of people, especially women, share their concerns with me. And women were concerned not about the sari and the Hinduism and all of that. Women were concerned about the grotesque message contained in the act of ripping clothes off of a woman in public. In a country where abuse, this is Paul Daniel Nahus. I want you to hear me say this. These are not my words, but I am very proud of Paul. In a country where abuse against women and rape is rampant, and we have this disgusting rape culture, it is outrageous and irresponsible to have a display like this. While assault in this manner was not the message, it was frightening that it was the underlying tone. You see what Paul is saying here is there was a subtext. And you cannot tell me that King Rowley and the rest of the band of marauding jackasses didn't know there was a subtext. The subtext was to dehumanize East Indian women. That is what they did. And I am looking now for the Equal Opportunity Commission to drag whoever it is was responsible for that to answer. But stick another pin. This board getting full. It was frightening that it was the underlying tone. Supporters watched, laughed, and cheered when there was nothing funny or heroic about what was taking place. Again, this is written by a PNM supporter. Paul Daniel Nahus. But Paul is a country first guy, eh? and we've been, even though we disagree politically, he like family. I consider him a son, and he's a bright and intelligent guy. Listen to how patriots think, eh? There was nothing family or socially appropriate about it. This was a skit that us as PNM supporters should be ashamed took place at the Sports and Family Day. Rather than trying to blindly support it because it was red, we should hold ourselves to a higher standard and be as outraged as the display was outrageous. I say this knowing that there will be a party backlash against me, but I cannot, capital N-O-T, support, condone, or stay silent on this or any issue which promotes the vile rape culture that many in Trinidad and Tobago are glad to uphold. Our women deserve better. <laughs> Paul Daniel now, Trinidad and Tobago, wherever you are, give Paul Daniel now a round of applause for me because the boy deserved it. Brilliant, well written, not a word wasted, beautiful. I, I love every part of it. This is how, and, 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 and I'm telling you, what, what, what touched me the most when I read it was the line where he said, I say this knowing that there will be a party backlash against me, but I cannot support, cut support, condone, or stay silent on this or any issue. Listen, when you love your country, you see, people are all day, you think I don't have friends in PNM? You think I don't have friends in UNC? All day, every day, Phil, oh God, come across na man. Come on. Both of them think they're going to make a home for me. Come across. When country, when you're doing this for country, they have nothing anybody could offer you. And Paul standing up to do this, there will be a backlash. Keith Rowley is not an easy jackass to deal with you. This is what I put out before I saw Paul's post. This was my public release today. A contemptible and hateful act, Prime Minister. 
What we witness in one afternoon at as innocuous an event as a sports day could be should ring alarm bells all across this country. The elected leader of this nation presided over a reprehensible act of racist intolerance and dehumanization of women in a skit designed to send a message that the PNM guerrillas were in charge and could do as they damn well please. This was followed by a hunter style haranguing of any and all opposition where unnamed opponents were ridiculed and threatened, all the while strutting about like an eerie parody of the likes of Saddam Hussein, Mugabe, and Hitler. Our country is being torn apart from within. Laws are being enforced to suit the whims of those who hold power. At the pinnacle of the age of information, Trinidad and Tobago is being dragged backwards to looming the totalitarianism, and perhaps it is time that we as an entire nation turn the spotlight on Keith Rowley, his finances and assistants, and the dark heart of the political movement he now wields like a club. There should be no room for this sort of behavior, especially at the level of the office of prime minister. And it may well be time for all of civil society to draw together, just give me a second, to draw together and confront this growing beast before it matures to our detriment. Public offices and the media seem to have been corrupted. Every indicator of social development are at all-time lows, while murder, crime, and corruption are at all-time highs. It should be clear to all looking on by now that the remedy is a simple and necessary one. Keith Rowley needs to be fired. Before he and what is being passed off as a government do any more damage to our flailing democracy. Now, I... I'm going to be starting my, my protest outside the Prime Minister's office. It is time for Keith Rowley to fire himself. It is time for Trinidad and Tobago to stand strong and stand together. 100 million messages. All you get excited when all you see that everybody in Trinidad, everybody calls somebody. I can only recall when Fitz called you laughing after the elections. Now he has been humiliated more than any other minister in Trinidad's political history. Thank you for that message. And that is the truth. Where was the Women's League on this? Which Women's League, Nicholas Jaikaran? Let me be clear. The PNN's Women's League that Eric Williams nicknamed the Fat Ass Brigade and they laughed at it because he was being facetious. That Women's League? Because all you could miss me with that bullshit. After this Ali, they don't have to replace Keith. When you fire Keith Rowley, you're firing all. He goes with all. The entire bungling bunch, the clunker, the all of the malcontents and incompetence, they go with him. So you don't have to replace him. You just have to fire him. But again, everything that we brought into the public space is bearing fruit. And it is gathering momentum. Trinidadians are no longer prepared. Hear this stunting jackass, your Prime Minister. This is him attempting to blame others for his own Neanderthal choices. Listen to this disgusting, divisive, incompetent, abrasive, and vile man. We will disregard such foolishness and we will not take any responsibility for persons who are trying to create this code. Hear this snarling jackass. Eh? There was a skit in a PNM march pass and if there are persons who will go into the depth of the Ramayan to try and link that to something, I want to say to all those persons when they speak about the PNM and the PNM's actions insulting to Indians, just remember, half of the PNM government is Indian. Kiss all of we ask with that one, Keith Rowley. You have five little token Indians in your party and you know it. So miss me with that bullshit. No half of the party is Indian. You, you are in a party that refer to the people of East Indian origin in this country as a recalcitrant minority. And nobody has ever apologized. And that has, and that has stained indelibly this country's history. So miss me with your bullshit. Just remember half of the PNM government is Indian. And if those Indians are insulting the Indian population, please have a conversation with them. Hear what the jackass is trying to tell you. Hear what this jackass of a prime minister is trying to tell you. That as long as there are Indians in the PNM, 
and those Indians not saying anything, it's okay. Imagine that. Imagine freaking that. That is your prime minister. That is your prime minister. Oh, they're blowing up this phone. Okay, somebody sent a message to all of Trinidad. I have all of the video and all of the picture footage of Fitzgerald Hines getting run out of. I even have footage of Rowling where he, wherever he is and they cussing him. Inside the party, keep rolling. The media wouldn't ask you this because Sabka News Network and One Caribbean Media and Castani News Day can't ask you this. So nobody has asked this before. So Philip Edward Alexander is going to be the first person to ask this publicly after your sports day. I gave everybody else time, nobody's asked. Keith Rowley, who is the imps that is threatening to unseat you as political leader of the PNM that has gathered so much support within the party that they're ready to kick you and your 1% cabal clean out of Balize House. Keep Christopher Mugabe Sangaroli, king of the infidels, first black Syrian, tell Trinidad and Tobago when you stood up and you told them that it is your job to protect the PNM from imps. Who was the imps that have you panicking so? Because, because like Macbeth, the sins that you put in train for other people, when all they organized you and Camille Robinson Regis and the rest of all they had organized to go Barbados, when all they had link up with the UNC to move against Manning, you didn't think that would have fall back on you. But when you spit in the sky, what do you old people say? They go fall back in your eye. This is all. All of it is your own. Keith Rowley, destiny, watch me, the coming storm is all about you. All that is going to befall you, my friend, you put in motion. We're not doing it. You are going to be the cause of your own political demise. Make no mistake. Dave Lux, if they have any trolls that you want removed, Send it to me as a private message. Thank you. Trinidad, stop selling, sending me videos. Or they're following up my mail. But I am proud of Paul Daniel Nows and every other PNM who is speaking out. Rank and file people in PNM. I'm hearing people saying, come better. Come better than that, Rowley. Come better, I hear in rank and file PNM people saying that. So tell me, Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago, all of you who sitting on your hands, who sitting on the sidelines, who bitching and moaning, you see the people of Beatum? The people of Beatum have more to lose than you could ever imagine. Because the PNM is a disgusting and vile racist cult and they will victimize those people. They will go through every piece of video, video footage and find every single one of those people and who have a job and who have an M and who have a HTC house or a URP or a CPEP, they're in trouble. They're in trouble, that is the PNM. And I wanna tell you and Tobago tonight, Stand with Beatum. Stand with Beatum. And all of y'all who sitting down thinking that the Yellow Army is the answer to this, y'all don't even understand the freaking question. We have a country to save. We have a nation to fix. We have to do it without the PNM and the UNC. The problem in Trinidad and Tobago is all of the cancer caused by those two cults and we have to face it. We cannot stand here. Somebody said, Sean Sunarain was the first person to tell me this and I found it on social media. A million seconds 
is 11 days. A billion seconds is 31 years. You see the difference between a million and a billion? A million seconds is 11 days. A billion seconds is 31 years. We've spent 3,000 billion. We've spent 93,000 years worth of seconds. A dollar a second. 93,000 years worth of money. We've spent money to the future, beyond the future. We've spent money into the millennia to come. We've made some disgusting little gutter rats who escape countries all over the world to come here and steal your children's patrimony, your inheritance. This country has been reduced to a failed nation, a banana republic by these two parties. Cancer and heart attack. Red and ready and yellow and unsteady. The two of them, the two of them, twin sides of a cancerous, corrupt, cultic coin. Keith Christopher Rowley, that song that you're hearing in your head, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. That sound, Keith Rowley, is the coming storm. Tick tock, tick tock. Children are fed up with you. They coil like Mappy waiting to kick. You see how you see how you lead that charge against Manning, where they built Manning with rotten mango in Balize House? Partner, next election, don't show up, you know. Don't show up. Because you see how PNM people has behaved. They go walk there with posy for you. All the thing, you know what they say? The grave all you're trying to dig for other people. You're going to fall into. Read your Bible. Open your Bible. You want to quote Ramayan. Well, it's the Maharabata that the, 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 the skit come from. That you take and you twist upside down. You ain't care to know. You don't even care to know. The counterfeit Indians that you're saying inside the party. Can you believe you're correct? You ain't care to care what it is you was insulted. Because you're Gal Gorgon. You feel like you could do and say what the ass you want. Because as long as you have black people stupid, you could do what you want. Today, the people of Peter showed the PNM that you can't count on people staying stupid forever. You can't count on it. Our people are awoke for the first time. For the first time, our people have a real choice. For the first time, they don't they don't have to say PNM UNC. For the first time, a man make a fake profile named Griffith Way. <laughs> but no, you're alone with that. You only know the man you impersonating there. He will find you. Derek Jones, you're talking plenty, plenty, plenty tonight. Talk to me. What you need? What you need? We need to take a page from Malaysia. All Trinidadians need to do is love their country. The same way those people in Beaton show today they love the country more than party. The same way Paul Daniel now who showed he loved the country more than party. That's where we need to be. Everybody need to get there. Join hands as one people under one flag and make this a better country. The country that we always knew we were supposed to have is on the other side of the madness that is the PNM and the UNC. Today, Beaton, of all people, Beaton Gardens, of all people. Yeah. Say Trinidad, 
that the people of Trinidad and Tobago have come together, have decided to stand as one people under one flag, that we understand that country come before party, that we have a real political opportunity. Keep your fake media, keep your 1% money, keep your bullshit bacchanal and fake noise. 56 years of two they're accusing each other of teething and nobody can make a jail yet, fooling we? mystery with that bullshit. It is time for all of us, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, to realize that we, we the 99%, we are the ones that take jam in the bank. We are the ones that take get stuck in the traffic when the, when the place flood. It's we host to get washed out. We the 99%, we deserve better. All of us, one people under one flag. And my Spanish and Portuguese ancestors met my Creole ancestors. Yes, I have everything in me. Brotherhood of the boat. Brotherhood of the boat. I will never forget the day, the night. I took my parents out for ice cream. And my father showed me. I knew he had grown up in Woodbrook in Hunter Street. And we went to the house in Hunter Street that he grew up in. Four houses down from Warren Street. If you know Woodbrook at all, Robert Street starts at La Perouse Cemetery and becomes Robert Street. Well, Robert Street goes all the way up to Damien Street by Kappa Drugs, but it continues on as Warren Street. The two of them part ways at the top of Rosalino Street. And Warren Street, go, so Robert's become Warren, becomes Mukarapa Road. And my mother showed me that she grew up at the end of Mukarapa Road. My father on Robert Street and my mother on Mokorapo Road. One long continuous strip of asphalt. Grew up as little children, 
didn't meet till they were grown ups in school. And that is to show you how life works. That is to show you how life is a funny, funny thing. A funny thing. Fitzgerald Hines. Yeah, cool. Let me get Fitz a call. I know you're watching, you know. I'm gonna dial your number, Fitzy. And set. And say number 50. Showing up on the phone as Philip Alexander. That is who we call it. Think you gonna take that call? Pets! Your call has been forwarded to B Mobile Voice Messaging Center. I'm gonna leave a message for Fitz. Fitz Gerald Hines is not available. The mailbox belonging to Damn it. Fitz Gerald Hines is it's full. full. To leave a callback number that you can be reached at, press one. No, my number sends. I don't hide my number. Fitzgerald Hines saw my number on his phone. And I can't leave this message in your phone, Fitzy, because your mailbox is full. So I can leave it here. They can tell you. All your partners and them in the PNM who just be watching this every night. They got, well, every night at the on now. They can tell you. Fitzy, how it feel, bro? How it feel when you was running from Bitam today? Did it dawn on you that all of the bullshit upon which the PNM is built, that it was possible for you all, you and the Alrawis and the Imbats and the Kujos and the Stuart Youngs and the little one percent cabal, it didn't dawn on you that you all could have been the undoing, that even though it took 56 years, Trinidadians have woken up to the madness that was done to this country by the PNM and the UNC, that Eric Williams never gave a shit about nobody. He was no father of no nation. He was raider of the nation, abuser of the nation, advantage taker of the nation. He outside children, Manning, Chambers, Rowley, do the same. And they step children, Pande and Kamala, Think, you think people would have never wake up to the reality? Eh? You think it never ever was going to come at time? Those who do not learn from history are condemned to relive it. that Philip Alexander come and tell you all that, that government is not royalty. They vex that Philip Alexander come and tell you all that government is public servants. They vex that Philip Alexander come and educate the nation to understand that those people, opposition leader, prime minister, and every public office holder, member of parliament, minister, chief justice, director, public prosecutions, commissioner, police, everybody from the top down works for the people of Trinidad and Tobago according to the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And yes, and yes, we're going to have to take some jam while we try to fix it because we know that these people and the people behind them who pull in their strings ain't getting it up so. They ain't getting it up so. But Trinidad and Tobago, like every other nation in the world that has come full circle, I have to tell people, I have to tell Trinidadians, if you see memes coming in the phone, I see, I see a bolt with Heinz head um, outrunning the Peter Peter residents.
Mr. Speaker, I see bitterness. Mr. Speaker, I see acrimony. Mr. Speaker, I see animosity. And Mr. Speaker, I see a man completely out of control. Completely out of control, Mr. Speaker. That is what I see. And that problem is not a new problem to me, you know. I was aware of the tendency for the other rebel to go out of control since 1987. I see hate. Mr. Speaker, I see bitterness. Mr. Speaker, I see acrimony. Mr. Speaker, I see animosity. And Mr. Speaker, I see a man completely out of control. Completely out of control, Mr. Speaker. That is what I see. And that problem is not a new problem to me, you know. I was aware of the tendency for the other rebel to go out of control since 1987. Lagoon, come and find Hyatt. Lagoon on Wrightson Road. Lagoon in West Morins. Lagoon in Maraval. All is Lagoon now. All. The entire country is a Lagoon. This is a world that has a Holland and a New Orleans that have managed being under sea level for 500 years. So when jackasses come on my thread to say, where want the water to go? Tide was in. Miss me with that bullshit. Crack a book, la man. There's a new invention they launched it yesterday it's called Google. Google could help you too. Don't come proud of your ignorance. Check your facts. Managing water levels, the Romans built aqueducts that used to take water from the valley over the mountain. The Panama Canal lifts ships, lifts ships to the height of a 10-story building and puts them back down in another ocean. Crack a freaking book. Water management is a science. It is available. Dubai is a desert, a complete desert surrounded by sand, as is Las Vegas. Water 24-7, 24-7. We have a country where our water management agency puts out a release because we have too much rain. We can't give all the water. Imagine a Trinidad Tobago where we replace Wasa with a big funnel that connected to all the pipes. And as the rain fall, everybody thankful. Because we don't even know how to manage rainfall. We know that there is a demand for water in Trinidad and Tobago to flush toilet, to wash clothes, wash car, water plants, drink. But if we give all your dirty water, or we don't give all your water at all, even though you're getting a bill every month or two months or six months, whenever you get a water bill, you're getting a bill. You ain't getting no water. When you get the water, you're getting water, it stink. It's brown. Somebody say that 
That's only happen when the water come back. I have to say, jackass, water going more than it coming. So it brown more than it clear. And that's for the apologists, the turncoats, the traitors, the Judases, the Uncle Toms among us. Who don't care about nobody else as long as they pocket full and they plate full. But as long as we cannot, despite billions of dollars being spent every year, we've spent more money on pipe in this dot, Trinidad and Tobago, to have circled planet Earth with PVC scheduled for a pipe two and a half times. But as long as we do not give the people proper water, this shit will sell. And the irony is, this shit sells in this bottle. But we don't have a plastic container bill. So Trinidadians toss this wherever they could. And these gather together and cause floods, which makes the situation worse. Because the government of the day doesn't know how to tell the manufacturers and the importers of these things that they have to clean up after themselves. That a 25 cent tax applied to this at the manufacture or importation stage will allow the homeless, the unemployable, the vagrants, the indigent, those who just cannot get a job, to be able to pick up and redeem 25 cents each. All of these, not just Blue Waters, all of the manufacturers, but this is the clear market leader and is the one that I have to have tonight. That 25 cents that is paid into those people's hands drills the money right back down. You take it from the top, you give it to the bottom. That's how society is supposed to work. So they now have hope and opportunity. They could, they could, they could get a crocus bag. And when they make enough money, they can get a wheelbarrow. And when they make enough money, they can buy a car. When they make enough money, they buy a van and hire employees. And before you know it, you're in the salvage business. Because the same thing that I'm telling you to do for this plastic bottle, do for the cans. So you see massive bullshit stunt? Mess with that. Put proper environmental policies that cleans up the environment while giving people an opportunity to earn money. Win-win. If I tell you there's a third win, you believe me? That this plastic bottle broken down to pellets or stripped into strips could be combined with gravel, cement to make flexible and strong concrete or used as pellets in road surfacing to reduce road noise and improve longevity of pitch paved roads. So that is win, win, win. The green fund money that being used to spend by all these plastic people who collect in your plastic to put it in a warehouse, to ship it to China, miss us with that bullshit. We could save that green fund money too. But those plastic collecting people don't want Philip Alexander to say that. Had he done them, don't want Philip Alexander to encourage the government to put a 25 cent tax on this. People saying that Hadid will pass the 25 cents on to you. I don't think so, because Hadid had to be watching. Trinidadians, I am being told, are going with full trolleys to the cash register in Massey. And when Massey telling them they have to pay 50 cents for a bag, they're telling them words to the effect of, miss me with that bullshit and leave it right there. We in Trinidad and Tobago need to understand that flooding is as a direct result of the failure of government to manage this country. Let's look at it from all fronts. We just spoke about dealing with the plastic litter that causes a lot of it. Now, they tell you there is something called white waste. White waste are fridges, stoves, washers and dryers, and sometimes even mattresses that people in Trinidad and think we have this idea. You know, you can buy one kit, two kit, three kit, four kit. We have a four kit idea when it comes to our environment. And we could throw a whole fridge on the side of the road. Because in Trinidad and Tobago, like the woman who get clamped in starlight. And I wanted to take her to task on her video, but she take down the video. Because she come out the car in righteous indignation. And talking about black on black crime. That the security guard black and she black. So he should not clamp her car for the 1%. And she shows Starlight Shopping Plaza sign to say that Starlight disadvantaged her because she black. No baby girl. They didn't disadvantage you because you're black. They disadvantage you because you park your tiny little car taking up three spots. So you had to be punished for that. 
But we in Trinidad and Tobago, we do not believe that there are rules for us. There are rules for everybody else. We want to live in a lawless, lawless society. So when the fridge stop working and courts drop the new one, throw the other one on the pavement. Somebody gonna pick that up. Somebody gonna pick that shit up. But do you know that the police service could just flip that fridge over, find the serial number of the fridge, enter it into this new thing, Google, and it will tell you which store had that. That serial number is the birth certificate of that fridge and you could follow it across the wide, wide blue sea to Trinidad and Tobago, across the island to whichever store sold it to that person and contact them to say where, who bought this fridge and your records would show and go on. Are you missing a fridge? Because there's one on the sidewalk with a serial number very much like the one that you bought from XYZ store 16 years ago. Is it yours? Because if it is, I'm going to have to charge you $5,000 for littering. No, sorry, that's my son Charlie. He rested down there because his belly was hurting him. We're coming to pick it up now. And all that bullshit you're going to hear. But if we start to enforce those simple laws, that's what broken windows, the theory that they put in New York City. New York City was the murder and crime capital of the world. M New York City was so bad, they created an entire comic book industry. You know Marvel and DC, those two things, Marvel and the DC universe, wouldn't exist were it not for how bad crime was in New York. Because all of those cities, Gotham, Metropolis, all of those cities is New York. And New York was so criminally bad that crime was industry. And that to the people of New York, there was nobody to save them. Along came Marvel and DC and made up superheroes. Batman, Superman, X-Men, all the works. You had to get a Fantastic Four. Because New York City was a mess, the daredevil, a blind lawyer. Listen, New York City implemented something called broken windows, which meant every crime is treated as a crime. Every infringement is treated as an infringement. If you break the law, you're going to pay. They started giving tickets to people who were jaywalking, people was laughing, and then they realized police came to lock them up if they didn't pay. And the word spread, and they started to enforce the rules. And the commissioner of police got very serious because Mayor Giuliani, who was charged with the responsibility, who was the highest performing district attorney in United States history, credited with breaking the back of the Sicilian Mafia. Rudolph Judy Giuliani implemented zero tolerance, broken windows. He told the nation when his police commissioner was given him stress, he told the nation at a press conference, I am the mayor. I am the absolute authority. I enforce the law through the commissioner of police. But it doesn't have to be this commissioner of police. And the commissioner of police got the message and they started to work. Right away. Because they realized this son of a bitch serious. And he put dashboard cams. And those dashboard cams became a national staple. Those dashboard cams couldn't be interfered with by the police officer. They, they changed their system into three, hour, into three shifts. And each shift was responsible, it's called a watch. And each watch had a watch commander. And the watch commander was responsible for all the men, all the manpower, all the material, all the guns, all the bullets, all the radios, all the battles, all the cars, how much gas in the car. All of that was the responsibility of the watch commander. The watch commander was a sergeant and it was a nice job to have. And at the start of the watch, the watch commander who is relieving a watch commander before him hands him all of the information as to what took place in their piece of New York City in the last eight hours. So he's aware. And all of the advisories and all of the be on the lookout. You ever heard of something called a bolo? Be on the lookout. All the all points bulletins, all the amber alerts, all of those things. This is what we're dealing with in our next eight hour shift. And all of those police officers go outside there, some, some walking a beat and some driving around in a dedicated area, you walk in three streets, they're patrolling 30 in that car. And at the end of the shift, the car's dashboard camera would be dumped into and checked your entire shift. 
everything that took place. So every time you stopped and every time you pulled over, they made it law that you could no longer stop a man and pass him. When you stopped a man, you had to park behind him to the left with your lights on so that they could see everything that takes place when you come out your car and go to his window or her window to say good evening, sir. All of it is recorded. I know, I have a dashboard cam in my car and it, it, I've had one for a long time. And thank you Satish for the new one that you just gave me. Satish Ramsaran, good guy. But coming back to broken windows because you need to understand that if we in Trey and Tobago started to treat all of these matters from blue waters and the plastic bottles to the Trinidadians who throw in the fridge and the mattress on the side of the road, all of them, if we treated, if the government had an understanding that it had a responsibility to clean up after all of them and to enforce law because you could deal with the plastic waste, you could deal with the white waste, and you know what you could also deal with too? The human waste. Put garbage bins down in the society. Put garbage bins. Because if we're running the police service properly, there will be police patrolling and they will see if anybody like vagrants interfering with the garbage bins. Because if you pass and a garbage bin emptied, it is probably a vagrant to one foot. And if he could escape you, you shouldn't be a police officer. True talk. And if vagrants interfering with the garbage bins, lock them up. That's breaking the law. And people who throw anything on the ground and out the car window, instead of stopping to use the garbage bin, charge them with littering. And give litter wardens a job. Give litter wardens a job. So all of a sudden we attack littering that causing flooding from at the source where the plastics are concerned or the waste where the humans are concerned. We deal with that. But they also have the fact that we've, developed, we've designed this country so incredibly peculiar that we have drought in dry season and too much rain in rain season because nobody has ever told us that the rain that falls magically from the sky, we could hold it. There is something called retention ponds. Japan just built one that holds a million gallons of water. We could build retention ponds, but what we've done instead is we've built box drains and canals and things that we call rivers, like Crystal Stream River. It's not a river, but anyway, we call them rivers. St. Mary's College River, all those rivers, the same freaking river. We built box drains that empty into canals, that empty into rivers, that take the bounty of rainwater and dump it in the sea. We are a mad little nation. Because those same box drains, every thousand feet could have a 10,000 gallon retention pond holding water going down the line every time rain falls. So bank do had a bus. And whether tied in or tied out, it doesn't matter. We deal with it. Whatever need dredging, dredge it. But we could build dams. We could build a dam in Central from all that water that's coming down all the mountains in the Northern Range. Stay all of them there. A hundred million gallons of fresh water. Make a lake. Let people come and spend vacations by our brand new lake. Trinidad and Tobago could be managed and this is where our money should have been spent. Three thousand billion dollars. Ninety-three thousand years of stolen money could have built those things could have built those things. We could have had a functional nation. You wouldn't have to be talking. One of my friends, Anthony Senanan from Toronto, he posted on one of my things. He said, this morning I got up early and I had to paint my water tanks. And as I had some paint left over, he lives in Canada. He says, I had some paint left over. I went to paint my rotter iron. He said, Haha, I'm only joking. I live in Canada. We don't have water tanks and rotter iron here. Why does Trinidad have that? Why does Trinidad have companies making water tanks? Why do we sell water in bottles? Why are we so broken and upside down and twisted that we've never fixed something as simple as water management? Break it apart, the catchment of water. You could do North, East, Central, South Tobago. You could do 41 independent, interconnected with bleed back valves interconnected water collection, purification, and distribution companies. You could build all of that with the money that we gave to Tamnak Thai to build Siam Nightclub. 
We're taking national insurance money to use it for disco financing instead of fixing and developing our country. Trent and Tobago is broken by deliberate design so that others could benefit. And you are not going to get that fixed if you continue to vote for the same madness of the PNM and the UNC because neither of them have ever taken it upon themselves. Let me tell you something, eh? You see, pipe, pipe is big business in this country. The people who supply pipe to Wasa, them rich. Because we have more pipe in the ground than just about anything else. The, in the future, the aliens who come to live on Earth, when they reach Trinidad and they dig up the ground, they will be perplexed as to why we have that much pipe underground. What were we trying to do? Because it wouldn't make sense to them. Because the solution is always dig up the road, lay more pipe. Dig up the road, lay more pipe. Dig up the road, lay more pipe. It never solves anything other than fatten the bank accounts of everybody who is involved in the pipe business. Pipe. And don't think about Tricon and Century, I've seen that on the wall. world. The pipe importation business. Follow that money. Follow that money. But, but our, our reality is that our country is broken by deliberate design. Our offices of state are used to suppress people bringing information to the nation. Our offices of state, it is easier now to sue a man for defamation. You have no case, you never make the case, just shut him up. Because every other office of state that's supposed to bring this information to the public is not. So now, all they want to do is squash anybody who's speaking out against them. But the problem is, all through history, this has never changed. All through history, truth will always prevail. Right will eventually triumph. Justice, justice must come. The Jews were slaves for 2,000 years. The blacks were slaves for 400. Justice must come at some point. People are going to wake up and they're going to stand up. And I think that today, today in Bitham, that message not going to get lost. All the other communities in Trinidad that consider themselves die hard before. All the other communities in Trinidad that thought Mova, Bitham, Lavantel, and Silots, BNM till they're dead. Today, run Fitzgerald Hines' ass. Send him running. Pump City Ras with his pompous ass had to run out of Bitam today. That message cannot be lost. Don't miss the don't miss the message. Don't miss it. There's a lesson for all of us. Country first. Under Keith Rowley, demonstrated how undemocratic a party they were. That same community that Bitham is in, Lavantil West, wanted Nylon Hippolyt. 22 out of 26 party groups in Lavantil West chose Nylon Hippolyt. The PNM took Lavantil East failure Fitzgerald Hines who was Keith Rowley's barking dog but he couldn't put him back in, in Lavantel East because Lavantel East wasn't taking that so he foisted him on Lavantel West and the people of Beatham had no choice but long before an election is due the people of Beatham say you know what 
Mystery with that bullshit. Even we deserve better. If it is that who you're voting, Lavantel East and West, Mova beat them Lavantel Silots. Instead of giving them representation, you give them bullshit theater and noise. You dance for them, you distract them, you send foolishness for them, you promise them a pool. The whole of beat them is a pool. They need an ex pool. The people need jobs. That same son of a bitch told the people that they're not entitled for the government to provide jobs, that the government provide this and that. Keep rolling, that marauding jackass told the people of Trinidad they go wean yourself off government. What absolute madness! And Trinidad sit down and listen to this man talk this pile of shit. That is government's job. You're not supposed to wean yourself off of government. Government's role is the well-being and the protection and the safety and the provision for all the people of the country. Government's job is not to harvest money in the treasury for the 1% bacchanalists to thief and go. That is not government's job. Government job is flooding and traffic and jobs and house and food and, and bank and insurance and every single thing that goes into making up a life in a nation. The well-being of the citizens is the function, reason and purpose of government. I think Beatam figured that out today. If they are the reason why. white, red, green, and every 
color in between to every religion to every citizen of Trinidad and Tobago I want you to hear these words well I want you to understand this is where the rubber meets the road we are the 99% when we talk about the 1% us collectively we are the ones who have been living in that latrine water for all of these 56 years Fitzgerald Hines found out today what the rest of us have known as reality for far too long we are the 99% they have no straight hair tatter hair brown skin black skin white skin yellow skin forget all of that they have no Hindu Muslim Christian Catholic Baptist Orisha forget that one people under one red white and black flag we the 99% it is us who stands up in the bank and take jam it is us who reach the bank counter to find out they're taking we money and fees and they ain't giving we no interest it is we who have to turn on that tap and hear that hissing sound when wasa turn off the freaking water it is we when they decide to raise fines raise taxes raise rates is we it falling on is we that they jamming in the grocery the foods we the 99 percent it is we 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 99 percent of this country that taking jam taking stick taking licks 56 years now stop letting them fool you with bullshit that we different we not we are the same people taking shit 56 years now come on now <laughs>
because please, we're wrapping the show up, but all of you who are here now, do me the first favor, click share on this video right now. Just share it to your timeline. You don't have to pick any groups. After you share it to your timeline, if you want to share it to other pages and other groups, thank you very much. But just share it to your timeline because they're blocking us and they're blocking notifications and this is how we're going to get past that. Us, people power. The second thing that I'm asking you to do, this Saturday at noon, I will be at 19 Stanmore Avenue at the Progressive Empowerment Party's headquarters. I would like every single one of you and to tell all your friends and family to come and join us. We are the beginning of the change we always knew we always needed. One people under one flag, united with plans, programs, policies, and ideas designed to, like a rising tide, lift all boats. We will make sure Sure, we will twin Goodwood Park and Lavantel, West Morins and Beaton. It is time all of our people had the same advantages and the same equality and justice before all offices of state. The Progressive Empowerment Party stands strongly for that. Come and stand with us. If it is that injustice. see 5,000 people come out in your numbers it is for you and it is yours our job is to serve you we as a political organization we are building the rescue for Trinidad and Tobago it is yours come and be a part of it too many people say they're not into politics politics making your life hell come and be into politics and answer back Trinidad and Tobago we have every right reason and opportunity to be one of the most blessed nations in the world this is paradise on earth convincingly but for PNM and UNC. It is time to change that. It is time as soon as an election is called to vote red and ready, yellow and unsteady into the sea. Empty the parliament. Fire all 41. Let us undo and redo. Let us start over. Let us make Trinidad and Tobago the country we want it to be that we could have for our old age and we could leave our children and our grandchildren. Don't stick. Stand up. The people are standing up. Stand with them. Come 19 Stanmore Avenue this Saturday at noon. Spread the word. Tell everybody we're fixing this. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.